Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's broadcast, Holo Tomography Techniques for 3D Label-Free Imaging of Live Cells and Tissues. It is presented by Paul Park, PhD, an Associate Professor in the Department of Physics at KAIST, Director of the Time Reversal Mirror Creative Research Center, and Co-Founder and CTO of TomoCube. I am Judy O'Rourke of LabRoots, and I'll be your moderator for today's event. We are delighted to bring you this educational web seminar presented by LabRoots. LabRoots is the leading scientific social networking website and producer of educational virtual events and webinars. Before we begin, I'd like to remind everyone this event is interactive. We encourage you to participate by submitting as many questions as you want anytime you want during the presentation. Just click on the Ask a Question box located on the far left of your screen and type your questions into the drop-down box that appears on the screen. Our speaker will respond to your questions via email. If you have trouble seeing or hearing the presentation, please click on the Ask a Question box to let us know that you're having a problem. This presentation is educational and thus offers continuing education credits. Please click on the Continuing Education Credits tab located in the top right corner of the presentation window and follow the process to obtain your credits. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Park. I will now turn the presentation over to him. Hello, um, I'd like to start expressing my gratitude to the host and um, guest. And I'd like to present the, the principle of the holotomography and its application in live cells and tissues. So uh, this for an hour, I'd like to try to provide some each explanation. And if you have any questions, you can contact me by email. I try to answer that. So. I like to start talking about the motivations of bioimaging. As you know, the inventions after the inventions of ripening microscope, it was not easy to visualize live cells and tissues because they're transparent on the visible wavelengths. So when you're trying to put the biological cells or tissues or even bacteria onto the cover slide, and if you use ripening microscope, they lose very transparent. So in order to solve these issues, the Dutch physicist, the Fritjernicki, came up with a very clever idea called phase contrast microscope. So the principle of phase contrast microscope is to convert optical the directional information, which is called the phase information in physics, into intensity information by simply inserting the plastic filter into existing microscope you can convert these low contrast images of biological samples to high contrast information and imaging so that you can now see um, cell boundaries as well as cellular organelles without using any labeling, exogenous labels or dyes. So that's why people still use phase contrast microscope in biological lab and medical hospital. And it has a few limitations. Okay, one of the limitations is that it does only provide 2D information, not three-dimensional information. And second limitation is that it only provides qualitative representations of the, the um, cellular imaging, which means you have the information about where the cell boundaries and where the nucleus and so on, but you don't have any quantitative information about cellular the, um, the contacts, for example cell volume and concentration, and you don't have any information in quantitative, quantitative numbers. And people also use the fluorescent microscope by injecting some dyes or expressing the fluorescent proteins conjugated to the target molecules of your interest. Now you have the great contrast to highlight and locate where is the specific proteins of your interest in live cell. But um, even though this field of the fluorescent microscope has opened the doors to molecular biology and molecular diagnosis, but one of the key limitations is that you have to modify the cell, so, which means the cell is not anymore its intrinsic state. And even more, it has also prepared the cell like overnight incubation and transfection, which is not ideal for the case that you want to watch the cell immediately. So about um, a few decades, 
The technique called the quantitative phase imaging where the holo tomography has been developed and which enables the imaging of live cell without using any exogenous labor. So this is the topic that I like to talk about um, throughout this webcast. And this is basic principle. Every material has the refractive index. Water has refractive index, and the air has refractive index. Cells and tissues and bacteria has their own refractive index distribution. The meaning of refractive index, it governs the speed of light as a light passing through the specific materials. For example, um, as you can see in these slides, when you shine the laser beam or the any light through these biological samples, such as the human lead blood cell, um, since lead blood cell cytoplasm has refractive index greater than that, that's the medium, so what happens? Light passing through this cell is slower than that of the medium, so resulting into the alterations of the direction of the light after transmission, which is called light refraction. And as light transmit through this sample, it has the um, deformed directional information or the, uh, in other words, the altered or the defected light, this light has information about the molecular shape of the cell. But unfortunately, using a conventional microscope or the naked eyes, you don't have access to this directional information or phase information of the light. However, if you employ the principle of holography, or the interferon interferometry by um, introducing the second laser beam um, interfere with the, um, the samples, the defective beam, and now you can convert the directional information into intensity information, which is called the hologram patterns or the interferon patterns. By analyzing those patterns captured by camera or the holographic films, then you can retrieve through um, this information, two-dimensional information about cells morphological um, the information. So this is a 2D quantitative phase imaging of the individuals, the lead blood cell. And now you can see the, um, the donor shape, which is characteristic shape of the human lead blood cell. And now uh, furthermore, we have the quantitative information about the thickness of the cell in micrometer units. So um, we have done some studies using these two-dimensional quantitative phase imaging by measuring um, the white blood cell and red blood cell on the glass slides. And we also able to measure the tiny vibration in the cell membrane of the red blood cell, which has the orders, orders of the 50 nanometers. And we, from those, the quantitative the, um, measurements about the vibration of the, um, the, the human lead blood cell, we can also retrieve the mechanical property of the human lead blood cell. So those information provides the label-free, the quantitative information of the cell, but this is not 3D imaging. Even though we have some um, the visualization technique to look down so that that looks like the three-dimensional, but it, in terms of information, it only has two-dimensional information. In XY space, it has only the height of the um, individual sample. So this is the two-dimensional information, and which is also called the topology information, such that the atomic force microscope can, can generate. In order to move on, or in order to access to the three-dimensional information, or tomography information, we have to do one step further, which has done in the, um, the X-ray CT domain. And if you imagine X-ray CT or the computer tomography system in the medicine or medical hospitals, if you open the machine for X-ray CT while it's operating, you will see the rotations of source of X-ray beam and detector. And while it's um, operating, it rotates over the human bodies and it measures multiple two-dimensional X-ray images from which by applying the computational the analysis steps, you can reconstruct three-dimensional 
information of the human body without any invasive process. This is how many doctors do some diagnosis based on this X-ray CT data. So our technique or the, the holotomography, in short the HCT, is the optical version of X-ray CT. So similarly then, uh, the X-ray CT reconstruct the three-dimensional tomograms of the human body, HCT measures three-dimensional distributions of the individual cell by measuring multiple 2D holograms as a function of various intermission angle. So the principles and physical principles are same, but um, in X-ray CT, it used X-ray beam, but in HCT, it used laser beam. In X-ray CT, it measures X-ray of the T-body of human body. In HCT, it measures and reconstructs the three-dimensional tomograms of the refractive index of human of the live cells and tissues. So using this technique, our group and many other groups in the world um, have addressed the biological problems and medical problems. But basically, we have developed a series of the microscope in order to measure this three-dimensional reflective index distribution. I'm not going into the details of the optical part, but to make, um, to make a long story short, we use the laser beam, and this beam is passing through this uh, sample. Um, after passing through, uh, before passing through the sample, we have galvanometry meters, which is which was used to scan the laser beam, um, scanning the um, angle of the laser beam impinging onto the sample. So after passing through the sample, the defective light is projected onto the camera plane. And without, uh, with just this configuration, this is the same as a conventional bright field microscope, so that you don't have any the, um, the, the, um, the quantitative information. In order to do the, um, the holographic imaging or the, the interferometric imaging, you have to split the incoming laser beam um, into two paths using beam splitter by a device called the BS1 in the diagram. And then the split beam, which is called the reference beam, will interfere at the camera beam which samples the diffractive beam. So by measuring the diffractive patterns, at the CCD or the camera plane, which is called the holograms. And now we have the two-dimensional the holographic images. As I said, in order to do 3D, you have to scan the laser beam, impinging angle of the laser beam impinging onto the sample. So by scanning the angle of gamma measuring meters, we can measure multiple 2D holograms as a function of illumination angles. So now we have this DMD the volumetric representation, but those are the X, Y, and the angle. So from those measure the holograms by applying some algorithms, we, were, we can retrieve this amplitude information about the sample, as well as phase information or directional information about the sample. And then by applying the reconstruction algorithm, similarly done in the X-ray CT, we can retrieve one three-dimensional distribution of refractive index of the sample from those multiple 2D holography measurements. And in the bottom of the slide, you will see that um, the snapshot of 3D tomograms of the individual lead blood cell using this technique, but um, the lead blood cell doesn't look like the normal because these cells are the malaria infected lead blood cell. So in the first, the left-hand side, you will see um, the lead blood cell infected by malaria-inducing parasites in each early stage. So in the left, um, the bottom, you will see small notch, which has some refractive index lower than the cytoplasm of the lead blood cell. That is the position where the parasite has invaded. And in the middle, we have the, the tropo joy stage, which is after the um, infect, infections by the parasites. Um, about the um, 24 hours, you will see the formations of the hemozone, which is the crystallization forms of heme at the digestion of the hemoglobin proteins by the parasite, and which has very highly effective index. So that can be seen in the middle of the cell. And in the right panels, you will see the very late stage of malaria infection called the hidden stage, 
You can also see the vacuoles containing the reproduced parasite. So even though we haven't used any labeling or stain any, any, or any preparation, we were able to imaging and uh, retrieve quantitative information about the cell, especially for this case, the leprous cell infected by malaria parasites. So using this HT technique, uh, many research groups, including my one, has the, um, addressed the various types of the, um, the study in cellular biology and medicine, so um, including the, the studies on the lateral cell and its biophysical or the pathophysiology of the related to the lateral cell has been studied. And nowadays, many people trying to adapt this technique in order to explore explore some fields such as the stem cell research and immunotherapies and, and immunology and microbiology and so on. So I'd like to introduce a few representative study. So what you see here is the images of the, the liver cell hepatocyte captured by the HT technique. Since this is three-dimensional technique, you will see the X, Y slides and Y, G and um, X, G. We have the tomographic information and those are the cross culture along those three axes. And now, what you see here is the reflective index distribution and also the color corresponds to the specific values of the reflective index inside the cell. Even though we haven't used any labeling agent, you will see that you, you can see the membrane of the cell as well as the, um, the nucleus membrane, nucleoli, and some the vascular structures having high reflective index. Those are the lipid drama because lipid has very high reflective index compared to the cytoplasm, which was also confirmed by using the conventional the labeling technique for the, um, the lipid drumlet using nine lead dyes. So as I said, since this information provides the quantitative um, values and properties of the cell, we were able to retrieve and calculate the value concentration, and other parameters in quantitative manners. So the reason is um, the meaning of reflective index in biology, is, um, it has the, the information about the protein concentration because there is a the linear relationship between the reflective index, reflective index values of the, the um, cell versus the concentration of proteins. There's a linear relationship. So once, at, for example, at the one point of the cell, we can measure the reflective index values of cytoplasm. So for example, when you have the values of 1.8 something, then those values can be directly and literally translated into the protein, protein concentration in green potentiators. So in fact, this reflective index distribution is the protein concentration map. So now we have volumetric information and protein concentration information. And if you multiply those two numbers, then it will give, a, like, give you the, the dry mass of the cell so that the mass of the individual organs or the cells can be quantified without the putting the cells onto the real weight. So at this point, let me explain the pros and cons of this technique of HT. The first advantage is this is label-free technique. Since we, it does not require any preparation or fixation or the introductions of the dyes or the um, first proteins, you can see the three-dimensional shape images of the cell in each native stage. So this is first advantage. Second advantage is, is that, as I said, it provides quantitative information compared to the first microscope, which provides the qualitative information about the locations of specific target proteins or the molecules. This information that we measure is a reflective index, which is physical parameters, highly reproducible, and the intrinsic optical parameters, 
So, which, and furthermore, those values of effectiveness can also be translated into the protein concentration in quantitative manners. So it has the capability of the quantitative imaging. Nonetheless, it has one limitation. The one other limitation is that it does not provide the good molecular specificity. What I mean by that, even though if you use HCC technique, you can precisely measure three-dimensional distributions of the um, cell in terms of refractive index, but um, you don't have any information about the molecular specific the information about the, um, um, the cell. For example, when you have measured the specific values at specific location of a cell, and you don't have any idea what kind of molecules or proteins are contributing that specific values. That's why we are not claiming this technique will replace the existing person-based the microscopic techniques, but I believe it will go um, complementary with conventional the optical microscopic technique for the study of the biogen medicine. And in the following slides, I'd like to introduce some of the, um, the representative works from my groups and other, other groups um, using this HCT in various applications. The first application is the, the hematologist. So um, in laboratory medicine, people use the machine called the CBC, complete blood count machine. So if you put the um, tube containing the blood in, and put it into the machine and using um, the light scattering techniques or the electric impedance and so on, it retrieve the various parameters about the red blood cell and white blood cell. For example, the white blood cell count, the natural cell, the volume, and as you know, the red blood cell contains hemoglobin cytoplasm and hemoglobin concentration and hemoglobin mass. Those numbers can be quantified by using the various the series of the technique in CBC machine. However, one of the limitations of CBC is that it only provides the average value for like thousands of the 100 lead blood cells. And even um, furthermore, they even destroy the cells in order to retrieve such, such parameters. But um, one of the motivations and, and driving force in medicine is that people trying to understand um, some disease by analyzing individual cells um, in, in tissues of human bodies. Um, similarly, then people have the under, the people um, previously people have understood the, the um, how the cells are working by analyzing the individual molecules in the composed of the cell. And now we are trying to many people are trying to understand the disease by analyzing individual cell with the single cell profiling. So. For the survey of this lead blood cell and even white blood cell, if you introduce HT, you can retrieve various parameters such as volume of the lead blood cell and surface area, which is very difficult to retrieve using conventional methods. And from the refractive index values, you can retrieve and calculate the hemoglobin concentration. And by multiplying hemoglobin concentration and volume, you can also calculate hemoglobin content. And by measuring the fast 2D um, holographic measurements, you can also address to, you can also retrieve and measure the vibration in the cell membrane. Um, from which you can also access to the mechanical the properties of the electro cell. And those parameters can be obtained simultaneously at the individual cell level. So um, under collaborative work, um, with other medical hospitals, and we have measured those parameters such as volume, hemoglobin concentration, and hemoglobin content, and so on. For four groups, one group is healthy, and second group is iron deficiency anemia, and third group is the electrical cytosis, and final group is the hereditary dyspherocytosis. Those are the genetic um, disorder. So since we can measure multiple parameters at the individual cell level, we were able to retrieve, um, we can also perform the correlative analysis between those parameters that was not possible using conventional methods. And we are now trying to understand 
um, those the um, scatter plots or in other words the um, correlative information to predict the disease or is some diagnosis application. And using this method, you can also study the infectious disease. So this is red blood cell infected by the um, Babesia parasite. It has shares very similar um, the pathologies with malaria parasite. And the problem of studying of this Babesia parasite is that those parasites were very difficult to be labeled using conventional methods. That sort of did was a hurdle and limitation in, in the, for the study. But if you introduce this HD technique, we were able to measure the three-dimensional reflective index distribution of this young cell, host cell infected by the parasite, the Babesia parasite. We can look at where is the positions of the parasites, and we can also retrieve the various quantitative imaging parameters out of those information. And this is the um, one of the application in, in example that this technique can also be used for the infectious disease. But the problem is, this is a system that built in my lab in KAIST, and as you can see here, the system looks very complicated. So um, previously, we have collaborators who send a sample to us, and we have measured the, um, those images using this setup. And that was not very, very effective, I found, because um, it will be a good idea that it, instead of like measuring the cell after the um, transporting the sample from the um, hospital or the biological lab, I think I, it will be much more the helpful for the biologists or the medical doctors have this machine by their desk next to a patient and next to cell sample and essentially utilize this machine in order to find some new medical diagnosis or in order to find some new, new, new findings. And the, the problem was, is since the system is, is, is so complicated, it is not easy to be built by the non-expert. Furthermore, the, is, since the system is the, um, the very delicate, it requires very sensory the calibration and maintenance. So one of the most important part was the governor metric mirrors, which is in the middle of this, this the, um, the photograph that was used to scan the laser beam um, the angles impinging onto the sample. Even though we can scan the laser beam with very high speed, but um, since it, it is very prone to um, the mechanical vibration and electric noise, it requires a manual the alignment every time before you have measurements. So I thought um, it is not a good idea to have the system in biological lab and hospitals. About three years ago, we came up with one idea to put everything here into this small machine. So the system is now commercialized by the company TomoQ, and the size of the machine is about the small desktop computer. Everything is fully automated, which means if you put your sample into the sample stage of this microscope and click the button, and it measures three-dimensional distributions of the cell of uh, less than 0.1 seconds. So the key technique was the improvement, the introductions of DMD, digital micrometer device, which has the um, component of the individual meters can be flipped on and off, and it has about like the few the tens of thousands of individual meters into this small chip form factor. So, one of the applications of the DMD, the conventional the usage of DMD, is the DLP projector. So, in fact, what you see here on the screen when you have the DLP projection is that it's just reflected images of these meters and after magnification. So, when you have a bright pixel on your screen using the DLP projector, which means its own stage uh, for this corresponding spot pixel, the DMD array. And if you have the dark pixel, that means the, um, the off space after tilting, so that the beam is not passing through this land of the DMD projector. But the gray color is scanned, it, it just in the, the, um, the, um, the, the moves scan faster than human eyes so that you do not recognize 
um, the, um, the, it's on and off, but you, you will see uh, based on the HSP juice, the, 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 the continuous color. The conventional applications of the DAP project is image projection, but we thought it um, can be used for this HT technique by projecting some patterns, like the grating patterns of the DMD, so that um, if you illuminate the laser beam onto the DMD panels and after reflection, if you have these grating patterns, you have the reflected light and the defected light. And the angle and the direction of the defected light can be fully controlled by the patterns you have projected onto DMD. So without having any um, mechanical the, uh, the movement, which can pro cause some, some vibration and noise, it scans the laser beam with very high speed and high stability so that you can reconstruct three-dimensional tomograms with very high precision. So this is key technique of this message. And using this commercialized versions of the HGT technique, many groups, including the um, um, those institute, they are studying the very interesting um, the research and trying to, they also explore the new um, topic of studies. And let me show you some example. So this, this photograph shown here, is uh, the red blood cells and white blood cells and hepatocyte measured by this HT techniques. So for the red blood cell, now you can see it's clear donor shape, and the white blood cell monocyte, you can see the cell membrane as well as the, um, the nucleus. And hepatocyte, you can see cell membrane, nucleus membrane, nucleoli, and lipid trauma having high lipid index. So the low data that HT technique generates is the um, grayscale um, in terms of the reflective index values of the cell. And similarly, um, done in SACT, we can also apply the pseudo coloring based on the values of the reflective index so that you can highlight the structures of interest um, to, uh, for better visualization. You can control and you can um, change the transparency for better visualization. You can change afterwards. Nonetheless, the low data in terms of reflective index tomogram has been captured and stored in your computer. And um, since this technique has a special resolution in XY domain about 110 nanometer and Y axis is about 360 nanometer, you can see um, soft, soft cellular structures with very high resolution. So top loads. You, will see, you can see the um, three-dimensional shape of the individual cancer cell lines. And in the bottom, this is the human platelet before activation and after activation. The size of platelet is about like one micrometer. But you can even see the inside of platelet and after activation, you can clearly see the pseudopod, uh, which is indicator of this activation of the individual, the platelet. And you can also study the microbiologists or the bacteria. Using conventional biofilm microscope, it only generates the outline of the individual bacteria. Um, from those information, you can distinguish bacterial species while you only have the quantitative information. But since we can measure three-dimensional reflective index distributions of unlabeled cell, now we can study the, um, the more literally more interesting information about um, the cells um, in its native the um, physiological state. For long-term measurements, incubation is required. So the maintenance and control of CO2, CO2 level, the temperature and humidity was very crucial. We can also provide those the accessories, small incubator fit into the sample stage. And then um, one of the recent work that we have done is the combination between three-dimensional fluorescence and three-dimensional reflective index measurements. And this new version of the commercialization of commercializes the HD technique can measure the three-dimensional effective tomograms of the cell. At the same time, it can measure three channels, 3D fluorescence images of the specific cell. So that you can retrieve um, two different information, the 
more peripheral information and quantitative information using refractive index components. At the same time, you can utilize this molecular information by introducing the um, fruits and protein. So that um, we believe this technique can offer the new directions for the, um, the study so that the people can also use their protocols based on persons um, and easily um, employ and introduce this new technique for their research. And I have prepared um, several movies which can show the uh, applicability and the potentials of the HD technique. And in the following slides, we will launch the video clip and showing how we can measure uh, various types of cells and tissues using HD technique. Hi. So the first movie shows how individual bacterial cells can grow and divide and finally forming bacterial films measured by color tomography. And in the second movie, you will see the time lapse dynamics of lysosome, cell, which is the um, hepatocyte. And since there's a live and happy, you can see the movement of the cell organs and finally you can see the, um, the necrosis of cell and the um, remaining the cell debris. This is the one rotation after measuring the 1CD. And this movie is the, um, the time-lapse movies of the HeLa cells and undergoing apoptosis and you can see the hallmark of apoptosis which is membrane bleeding. So, and after some time the cell it finally stops moving as they, 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 they die. And in the following movie, we show the still elegance with the label free images. And this movie shows timeless images of the CAR T cells attacking this, this target cancer cell. And this movie was taken for every um, 30 seconds and up to 6 hours. So since uh, have, have, uh, we haven't used any labeling agent, we can see the movie so the slide set for a long time. And in this movie, you can see that this CAR T cell has recognized target cancer cell, and followed by the, the cell induce the apoptosis of target cell, and finally, cell, <coughs> target cancer cell is, is destroyed. And this movie. Should Okay, so we have gone, I have shown the several the um, representative the movies, the time lapse 3Ds and also the um, 3Ds images of individual cells and tissues using HD technique. And um, to summarize, the bright bright field microscope was designed and invented for imaging small objects, but it was not ideal for imaging the biological cells and tissues because they are transparent under the you know, optical wavelengths. Phage contrast microscope. It provides high contrast for transparent cells and live cell images and tissues without using any labels. But this is not 3D and it doesn't provide the quantitative information. And HGT technique can provide three dimensional and quantitative information about cells and tissues without introducing exogenous labels and dyes. So throughout this video clip, I have gone through the basic principles about the quantum field engines and HT techniques and each the drug application in some of the simple studies in the um, cellular biologists. And for further information, you may want to refer to the group written by Gabby Popescu in Avada Champagne, the title the Quantitative Phase Imaging of Cells and Tissues. And we can also refer to our review articles um, published in centers. And another review articles in its application in biology and medicine will be come out in Nature Photonics in October so 2018. So you can also refer to that. And um, we have conference the on this topic or the quantitative phase images, and this is the um, the great the um the place for the optical scientists and biologists and even the medical doctors get together 
to discuss and also work together on how to utilize and um, the, the develop the system for in order to move forward to better understandings, understandings of the cells and the disease. With that, I'd like to thank for your listening. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Park, for that informative presentation. We will now start the Q&A portion of the webinar and we'll address some of the most commonly asked questions by our viewers. If you have any questions you'd like to ask, please do so now. Just click on the Ask a Question drop-down box located on the far left of your presentation window. Type your question into the box that appears on the screen and click the Send button. Our speaker will follow up with your questions via email. Let's get started. First question is... What are the pros and cons of using HT compared to existing microscopy techniques? Um, so one of the pros, so let me explain the pros and cons of this the HT. The first advantage of HT is label-free imaging capability for live cell. Since it does not require any exogenous labels because it utilize intrinsic the optical parameter for imaging. You can do live cell imaging without using any exogenous labels. That is first advantages. And second advantage is, is that the meaning of reflective index has the um, information about the protein concentration. So by measuring the reflective index tomograms of cell using HT technique, you can retrieve quantitative information such as the protein concentration and protein content of the subcellular organelles as well as cell body. And one of the limitations of the HCT technique, it does not provide good molecular specificity. Even though you can pre precisely measure the 3D distributions of the effective index, but you do not have access to um, the information about what kind of molecules or proteins are contributing the specific values of the effective index. Thank you. Um, next, how small an object can HT image? The theoretical limit of the optical resolution of HT is um, the diffraction limit, which means if you use the optical lens or the objective lens having a specific numerical aperture, which means the how much angle that you can obtain the, um, for imaging process. Or, and if you use the um, typical high-end objective lens, which can cover us up to like 70 degrees of depression angles, resolution go down to 100 nanometer in XY domain. And at G axis, you have the resolution of about 360 nanometer. And those values can be variable depending on the choice of the wavelength and um, the choice of the objective lens. But um, you cannot go down to the um, size of virus about tens of nanometer because in order to do, in order to access this information, the optical resolution is, is not um, the good way without introducing some, some techniques called the fluorescent the super resolution microscope. Well, thank you. I, I would like to once again thank Dr. Park for his presentation. I would also like to thank LabRoots for making today's educational webcast possible. Before we go, I want to let everyone know that today's webcast will be available for on-demand viewing through December 27th, 2018. You'll receive an email from LabRoots letting you know when this webcast will be available for replay. Please share that announcement with your colleagues who may have missed today's event. That's all for now. Thank you for joining us. We hope to see you again soon. Goodbye.